So I want to get to space time is not doomed. There's quite a yeah. few subjects I still have to get to. <laughs> I want to be mindful of your time. But how about we talk about space time not being doomed? It's something yeah. that's said now. I don't know if you know, but there's someone named Donald Hoffman who frequently cites this. He's not a physicist, but he cites it as evidence or as support for his consciousness as fundamental view. And then there's Nima Arkani Hamed, who's the popularizer of that term, though not the inventor. Yeah, so, so maybe to, to, I mean, I can kind of summarize that. Yeah, so I, I don't really have anything useful to say about, about Hoffman. I mean, he, so he's interested in consciousness and other things I don't really, I don't really know much about or I'm useful to say, but maybe to say what the, um, and I mean, the reason I wrote that there's this article you're referring to about space time is not doomed. I, I, I wrote partly because I was getting frustrated at how this had become such a, an ideology among people, among people in, um, working in physics and <clears throat> on quantum gravity, that this, this idea that, when people first started thinking about how do you get quantized gravity, how do you quantum gravity? So the, the initial one, one of the initial ideas was, well, we've learned that we have this incredible successful ex- successful standard model. So let's just use the same methods that work for the standard model and apply them to gravity and we'll do that. And so it's going to be and you're thinking of space and time in this usual way. And then there are these degrees of freedom that live in space and time, which which tell you about the the metric and and the geometry of space and time, and you're trying to write a quantum theory of those things living in space and time. People have tried to do this. There, there's lots of problems with doing it. It, it. It's an incredibly long story. String theory was partly reaction to the story. But even string theory was still a theory of strings moving around in space and time. So you weren't starting with thinking thinking in terms of a space and time. But but more recently, you know, as string theory hasn't really worked out the way people ex- expected, there has been this ideology of, oh, well, let's just get rid of this space and time somehow and we will write some theory in, t- in some completely different kind and in the low energy limit we'll recover space and time as some kind of effective structure which you only see at low energies and that's become almost an ideology like our connie Hamid likes to say space time is doomed mm-hmm. you know meaning the the truly fundamental theory is going to be in some other mm-hmm. variable variables and space time variables he, he has his own and proposals for this about <clears throat> these geometrical structures he's using to study amplitudes. Anyway, the, the things that I'm do, that I'm doing, you a, you actually do get a theory. It looks like you know gravity should fit into this, and it will fit into this in a fairly standard way. Um, this is standard space and time, except you know that in the, the twister geometry point of view on it, and interesting things happening with spinners you didn't expect, but it, it's still there is a usual idea about space and time are 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 there. So problem with, with with this whole kind of space time is doom thing is you have to have a plausible proposal for what you're going to replace it with it's all well and good to say that there's some completely different theory out there and the theory people are used to is just an effective approximation first you got to convince me that your alternative proposal is it works and and the, and the problem is that people are just doing this without any kind of plausible or interesting proposal for what it is you're going to replace space time with and often and often it, it even comes down to this crazy level of kind of this multiverse thing i mean we have this theory where everything happens so fundamentally everything happens but then effectively you only see space and time and it's kind of you know you can say words like that but it's it's kind of meaningless Mm -hmm. why is it that they have to come up with a decent proposal or replacement why can't they just say look there are some with our current two theories there's an incompatibility that suggests that space time quote unquote breaks down at the plank level or maybe before so, for instance, Nima's argument that if you were to measure anything with it classically, you have to put an infinite amount of information somewhere, and then that creates a black hole. And then there's also something with the black hole entropy that suggests holography, but that doesn't mean space time is doomed. It's just a different space time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but from my point of view, I mean, what 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 has become the focus of that field a lot is this is is are actually quite tricky you know, very non-perturbative, very kind of strong field problems about how, you know, what's going to happen to the theory when you've got black holes and black holes are decaying. And so you've kind of moved away from, but but, but the problem with the inconsistency between is normally that is normally the one everybody worries about is, is, is normally a different problem. It, it's a very, very local problem. It's just that if you, um if you think of this in, in terms of the standard, standard kind of variables, like, like what's the, the metric variables and you use the einstein hilbert action for the dynamics for these things if you try and apply standard ideas of quantum field theory locally to that 
at short distances, you get these renormalization problems and the theory becomes unpredictive. So that's always been considered the, the real problem. How do you deal? How do you deal with that? But instead of having a proposal to deal with that and having a a real mm -hmm. a new idea about what what's really going to happen, what, you know, what are the right variables at these short distances that will not have this problem? What what, what are you going to do? They kind of ignore that, decided to ignore that problem and say, well, maybe string theory solves that problem. Who knows? And and, and then to move on and to try to do, you know something much much harder which is to, to to resolve these issues about what happens in black hole backgrounds and stuff and uh i don't know but but it, it seems to me a, <clears throat> kind of a separate a separate issue you can still have space time and have these 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 issues about you know what's going to happen in in black hole backgrounds and stuff and, and you could still resolve them in different ways but but they're just they're really it's it's a very frustrating subject i think find to, to actually to try to learn about you see people making these statements and then you say okay well what what exactly do they mean i mean it's all well and good to, to say these very vague things about this is doomed and what what about <laughs> infinite amount of information blah 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 but you know write down tell me what we're talking about here and there there really isn't uh it's it, it's almost like comically impossible to kind of pin people down on what is the what are you talking what theory are you talking about and it and then finally when you pin them down you find out that what they're actually talking about is they've they're talking about some very very toy model they're saying well we don't know what's going on in four dimensions so let's try it in three dimensions and maybe two dimensions maybe one dimension and so they're talking about some mm. com comically trivial um toy model which they kind of ended up studying because well you could study it and that maybe there's some analogous problem happening in there and and that all they have are these kind of toy models which which actually don't seem to have any of the actual real physics of four dimensional general relativity in them and that's what they're that's what they're all studying these days i see even nima well he, he, i mean he he's somewhat different because he he's coming at it from a different point of view he's coming at it from this point of view of of really trying to see find new structures in the um in the perturbative expansions for um you know for standard quantum field theories so he's got a he's got kind of a specific program looking at um yeah i mean it's, he, he's he's not he in general he, he's not studying toy models he's studying real four-dimensional right um, physical models but but they're not um but 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 they're 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 often they're generally models like Yang Mills theory where you know exactly where the theory is and, and it's not this is this isn't solving the problem of quantum gravity or anything it's it's a it's well in theory but I I, I think maybe, maybe I should I'm saying this a bit too quickly without thinking but 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 just to try to give a a flavor of what I think he thinks he's doing he's okay. he's he's trying to take a theory that you do understand well like Yang Mills theory and look at look at its perturbation series Feynman diagrams find new structures there and a new language and then see if you can build rebuild the theory in terms of these new structures and and and, and then then if you've got kind of a new way of thinking about quantum field theory in terms of these new different structures like his amplitude hedron or whatever then maybe you can then apply a, once you've got a way of thinking in terms of those new structures you can go back to the problem of quantum gravity and and and, I see, and I see. that yeah so i think he, but you know i don't think he he's not in any way as far as i know claiming to have actually gotten anywhere near there but he's yeah and and, and this, this gives you a, a lot to do there's a lot of interesting structure there there's a lot to work on and and so he and his collaborators have you know have, have done a huge amount kind of calculationally with these things but i at least to my mind i i don't see them kind of coming up with what i think that they hope to come up with which is a a different geometric language for, for for that that really works and is really powerful for um that that's going to get you something new. If you enjoyed that clip, then the full podcast is out right now. You can click around here. Enjoy. Subscribe to Theories of Everything to get notified of upcoming podcasts as there are new full-length podcasts every week on the topics of mathematics, physics, consciousness, free will, and AI.